Good morning. Welcome to the Celtic Way Morning Briefing Live. I'm Tony Haggerty. Sorry if you were expecting someone else, but hey, they don't make mirrors the way they used to. But here we are. A hey, Haggerty 10, the Twitter handle. You know the drill by now. And I'm joined today by Sean Martin at Sean Martin TCW and Aidan McDonald at Aidan C. McDonald. Gentlemen, how are we doing? Aye, no bad, Tony. Sorry, I was waiting for Aiden to go there. Aye, no bad, Tony. Yourself? Ah, okay, all good. All good. Aiden, yourself? You all well? Yeah, yeah, all good, Tony. All good. You, you look like you're in your big swanky office in Glasgow. Very, very exotic location. From the he, looks as, he looks as if he's in Castle Haggerty to me. That's what he looks like. <laughs> <laughs> if, he, if he starts digging out pina coladas, I'll be, there'll be a Shears inquiry any minute uh-huh. now. Uh, yes, indeed. Now... Ladies and gentlemen, as we always do, we'll direct your attention to the strap line running along the bottom of your screen. We've always got an offer, and this month's offer is four months of access for a pound for new subscribers. And if you subscribe, you'll also receive a limited edition bespoke A3 artwork by renowned Celtic football artist made by Frankie. There it is on your screen there. It's all for the click of a button, guys. You can join us, www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe that's www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe four months a pound unlimited access to everything that's written on the website something there for everybody as we always say and we also thank our new sponsors seneca the celtic way morning briefing is now sponsored by seneca medical group and seneca the number one hair transplant company in europe and offer innovative hair estate restoration treatments and you can find out more about Seneca via the links in the description of this video. And we say thank you to them, don't we, Sean? We do, Tony. I and uh, <laughs> I <laughs> uh, on, on Seneca, lads. Right, I feel I feel that that's my wife getting involved in the not too subtle nudge in my direction now. Uh, ah. I woke up, I woke up this morning, right? I woke up this morning uh, to her having messaged me a TikTok video, and it's this person sitting sitting coffee, right? Like like a real life Kermit the Frog. That's none of my business, meme, right? I presume that's what the, the thing was. And the tagline read something along the lines of, next time we have a fight, make like your hairline and take a couple of steps back. <laughs> <laughs> there's, well, nothing can, there's nothing I can even say to that. Yeah, there, there's nothing you can say to that. But uh, yes, yeah, Sean, indeed, I think uh, that your wife, Heather, doing your beauty, basically, is that what it? you just saying? Done me a belt, I? And that's in between <laughs> telling me once again I've made the mistake of shaving and getting my head shaved and look like my baby girl again, but there we go. <laughs> well, there you go. But we thank you. We thank uh, Seneca for the... So you're going to say you thank my wife yeah. for getting the <laughs> and, and thank <laughs> your wife for taking the mic right out you, Aidan. We like that, don't we? Heather sounds like the kind of person we'd get on really well with you. That's good part of to be fair. There's nothing you can do sometimes. You just need to I've never accused her of having good part of Aiden. Come on. <laughs> he just holds your hands up and say, okay, keys. You know, you're never winning in arguments. But there you go. Now, gentlemen, Celtic squad was trimmed yesterday by one. Moritz Jens announced that he was leaving the club. And I have to say, what a classy departure from the man and what a classy statement he put up. And... Uh, and we were speaking about this in, in the group chat and we felt that uh, he came in and he performed a function, didn't he, Sean? Yep. But it, um, it was, as we said, option to buy. That's how these these loan options work. You mm-hmm. don't necessarily have to uh, undertake that option at the end of the deal. Yep. And that was one of the try before you buy Celtic tried and with others coming in and others coming back to fitness, you know, Jens came in and performed a decent role, but Celtic ultimately have decided that he should go and seek uh, pastures new and resurrect his career. But uh, good luck to him, Sean. I thought he was seemed like a popular guy as well, and he seemed like a decent fella. And I said to you off air, the first time he was introduced to all the media, I shook all the journalists' hands, said he was delighted to be here, and he was always smiling, and he just seemed like a, a good egg. Let's just say that. I... Judging by the the kind of goodbye messages from his teammates, he seems a popular guy. So obviously, Matt, one of Matt O'Reilly's really good pals when he arrived anyway already. I appreciate yeah. Celtic, but no, I think um, first of all, right, first of all, he's confirmed it's getting cut short himself, but the club's not confirmed it yet, yeah. and yeah. neither have FC Lorient either. 
Uh, but he posted on his Instagram, and you're right, it was a classy message. I'm not going to read the whole thing out, but he addressed it to the Celtic family. said he was leaving. It was a fantastic period, proud and honoured. Um, he thanked uh, Ange Postacoglu directly. He mentioned the staff, uh, he mentioned the fans. He quoted from the Celtic Symphony at the end as well. So he, he yeah. obviously he enjoyed himself at Celtic. I think that was clear to see. He made noises very quickly after joining that he wanted to stay permanently. I think he knew what a chance it was to move from FC Lorient kind of mid-table to, to lower reaches of uh, the French top flight to Celtic in the Champions League. I think he saw what opportunity that was. Uh, it was just very unlucky, I think, that... Listen, he leaves having played all six Champions League group games, remember? Yeah. Clocked nearly 1,700 minutes and he got a couple of goals as well. I think he did well all in. And we kind of talked about this yesterday in relation to Kobayashi and things, but being the only centre-back who's there on loan when you recruit a new left-footed left centre-back means it's probably natural that you're the one that's going to miss out. And it, it, it could have, and I think Aiden's going to come to this because he mentioned this in the group chat last night, it could have even probably stayed until the end of the season anyway. But yeah. I think this reinforces that he wasn't going to play. And also for me, I see it as almost a big vote of confidence in, in Yuki Kobayashi as well because he can challenge Starfelt for that left centre-back directly. And there is no more each in the, the picture at all at that stage. Yeah. Aidan, you go along with that. You said that in the group chat last night to the two of us, didn't you? Yeah, I think uh, he was a steady hand when he was here, Jens. And like Sean was touching on, obviously, he played a lot in the Champions League, very much at the highest level. When Carl Starfelt was injured, he came in and he, he did all right for the most part. I, I just think, obviously, like also Sean mentioned, with Kobe Asher coming in, it was always going to be hard for him to get consistent game time going forward. And I mean, you've seen that. I think he did get some minutes on the Ange homecoming tour in the Sydney Super Cup, but really since then, I, I, he's not had any minutes post-World yeah. Cup break, so he's very much not been in the plans, even before Kobayashi was like officially able to play from January. So it was always going to be hard, but in terms of like a you know, try before you buy one deal, it, it was fine, came in, did a job, and if he hadn't have been there when Starfelt was injured, then Celtic could have been in more trouble, so... Overall, wish the guy the best, but I think it was probably the right time to move on, just given the squad situation. Yeah, without a doubt, Sean, uh, I think mm-hmm. Derek Crawford nails it there as well. Derek did very well, and he's always a stopgap for himself, and while Starfield was out, and Kobe Ashi was the nail in Jens' uh, coffin in terms of game time. And mm-hmm. we spoke about that as well, about the fact that Kobe Ashi's come in, and it's the left centre-back, isn't it? That natural left-sided centre-back, mm-hmm. which... And moving forward, and you, we always try and second guess Angie. And you always there's there's a bit in you that thinks that Angie's seen Cameron Carter Vickers alongside Kobe Yashi. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving forward, you know, or Starfelt playing at right centre back when he's maybe rotating Cameron Carter Vickers because he played the two there initially. Uh, whilst Cameron Carter Vickers has missed a couple of games. Mm-hmm. And Timon on, it's always possible, isn't it, Sean? It's always it possible. is possible. It I is don't think it will, but it is possible. Yeah. It is possible. Yeah. You know, so you you just try and, I always say, you try and connect dots, don't you? So there, there's where there's, there's the feet the back clacks. <laughs> yeah. But, Listen, uh, it, is, it is possible. Like I've said before, it, he's played three at the back in, in previous uh, at previous times in his career. He's not done it in a, a good while just now. and he does favour a 4 3 3, and I think 4 3 3 works well for Celtic in terms of the, the domestic situation they find themselves in. Uh, it's also easier to adapt a 4 3 3 to have, for instance, maybe two sitters yeah. in Europe than it would be going from three to four back to three. Um, but the personnel, I think, yeah, it could do it. It, it definitely could do it. Um, I think the, the one time that he has done it at Celtic, that Boxing Day game, was, was basically a, yeah. a byproduct of the Covid ravaged squad sure. that, he, that he had to take to that game. But they still won it 3 0, was it? 3 0? Um, yeah. Was it 3 0? 3 1. 3 1, I think it was. Just because I remember Barkas um, not keeping a clean sheet. That was why. Um, well, aye. <laughs> aye. So I think that, that wasn't really a, a harbinger of like he's going to play it all the time or anything. But I do think the personnel that said he could conceivably do it, I just don't think he will. I think he'll stick with the 4 3 3 and uh, any kind of tweaks will maybe be for Europe where it might be. Iwata and McGregor together, as we've kind of spoken about. Aidan, you've asked that you're in the garden centre or Aidan live from Casablanca. Well, here's looking at you, kid. <laughs> you take, take centre stage now. Uh, indeed, an old one there for 
those who are familiar with their films. Uh, now, Aidan, Maurice Jenks was the first of, I wrote an article the other day for the Digest, we called it Celtic's Expendables. Maurice Jenks was on that list. There were six players on that list. Now, the list, do you see any more on that list moving? Or should we just go through them, Sean, and take them one by one? I think we just take them one by one, and if, if people have got comments on, on any of them, well, we'll, we'll chat, we'll throw them up, I think, yeah. Okay, well, I'll come to you, Aidan. One of the ones on the list was Oliver Abelgard. You mentioned Abelgard the other day, and I put him on that list, and I said he was expendable, and it was time that Celtic just cut their losses on that one. They had high hopes. It just hasn't worked out. Is that the way you see that playing out? I know he's wanted back home in uh, Denmark. Maybe he's a chance to resurrect his career if he goes back home. Yeah, I think he is somebody that the club will probably look to move on if possible. Obviously, it was maybe a slightly strange deal when he first joined because you know it wasn't kind of clear that you, most loan deals under Ange previously there was an option to buy, etc. at the end of them, but that wasn't really the case with us loan, but it wasn't clear that that fully wasn't the case when he first joined. It was a wee bit sort of in the dark, but I think if possible, Celtic will want to move Abu Gard on. The fact that Jens has moved on, who did have significant game time at one point, Compared to Abogard, I think he's made is it nine appearances or something like that. They've all been off the bench. Mm -hmm. So I think if the club can get it done, he'll be getting moved on in this window, Tony. Aye, Tony, 200, 209 minutes. Yes. Played, not a single start. Um, I'm kind of still uncomfortable with calling it alone because the club never ever called it alone. Um, they called yeah. it a year long deal, which I took to mean the, they were taking advantage of the, kind of the, the war in Ukraine situation. Uh, with Russian clubs and Ukrainian clubs as well, but obviously Abogar came from a, a Russian club, uh, could be basically cancel the contract for a year and re resume it at a later date. And I, I basically think that's what it was rather than a loan deal. Uh, because just the word, the way that the wording or the way that the club announced it and different things, they also took advantage of that with Haksabanovich, but that was a permanent deal. Um, yeah. But yeah, the, the, the Abogar one, I'm still not really, it's, it's a year long deal rather than a loan deal. But to me, Tomoki Iwata coming in the door. Reportedly, Alborg from from Denmark they're interested. So to me, Tony, it seems like a no-brainer. Eh? Yeah, of course. I think uh, some players could maybe do with going back to their their own league and what they know, and uh, as I say, resurrecting their, their career if they can. You, you wish them all the best if that happens. But uh, Abogar's just a curious one, isn't it? It really mm -hmm. is. It's just I think De Derek Crawford's nailed it there, Tony, because. When and I say this all the time, whether it's younger players or, or fringe players, when are you going to get the chance if there's injuries or if there's suspensions and things? Yeah, you're you're so six that was like the guy that you're never going to usurp from the, the sixth position. Carl McGregor gets injured and is out for 11 12 games, and Abogar doesn't start any of them. He comes on yeah. in the game, he gets injured, and that, that was really that was the most that he got, really. Um, yeah. he, he adapted Matt O'Reilly to play there rather than play Abogar yeah. there. So, I, I think it, make, it makes perfect sense to just cut your losses with it. And, and that said it all, Aidan, didn't it? That last part of that sentence there, when he when he didn't trust Abelgard to play that role, when he turned Matt O'Reilly into a six, and Matt O'Reilly did very, very well. Celtic never dropped a point when Matt O'Reilly played in, in that role, and he, he deputised very well for him. But when you had Abelgard there, and he seemed to take every box, he seemed to have height and a bit of presence, but just didn't show it, or didn't get a chance to show it, and just didn't really work out, did it? Yeah, I think that was a signal that he was probably destined not to make it at Celtic when somebody who, for all the purposes, yeah. didn't used to play that position, was then playing as a number six. That kind of said that the manager, I don't want to go as far and say not trust him, because that maybe sounds a bit harsh, but he obviously didn't fancy him in terms of when the main man, the captain, was out, Cal McGregor, and wanted Mark Ray in there over somebody who's meant to be a number six. So it, it was... Probably was the case that he wasn't going to work at Celtic, and he, he he's not featured a lot. Am, am I right in saying that his sort of longest individual spell on the pitch was against Leipzig away, which was also a game Cal McGregor got injured. Mm -hmm. If he hadn't got injured, you'd imagine he probably would have finished the ninety minutes that night. So, yeah, it's just not worked out. But that can happen with players. But I think it is, and just in terms of the Jens example, I think it is good that the managers maybe got maybe not a ruthless streak, but he's wanting to just get people out the door that aren't really involved that much and I kind of would expect as possible I will guard that'll be the case before the end of the transfer window. Yes. Aye, Tony, Aiden spot on 65 minutes he got that day. 
uh, or that night, I should say, that, that McGregor got injured. And I think the most that he played was actually, apart from that, was actually in the Sydney Super Cup friendly, and that was only a half. Uh, I think maybe half an hour against Motherwell was the, the, the best he got, apart from that that Leipzig game. So, I, it's to me, as I say, it seems a no-brainer. If there's a, if there's interest there, and if there's interest there, and he's willing, he's not he's not going to get a game. Fundamentally, he's just not he's not going to get a game. So you might as well try and move it on. Yeah. Now another one of those names on the list, Sean, was uh, Connor Hazard. Yep. The quadruple treble, Scottish Cup winning, penalty save hero. Yep. Connor has gone to HJK Helsinki and did very well. Played in European ties against Roma mm-hmm. and Real Betis, but. Uh, he's come back, but he's not dislodging Ben or, or Seagrist or Ben as backup from Celtic, I don't think. And they've already sent out Toby Ollie Wemi to Ireland, haven't they? Uh, on yeah. loan. Mm-hmm. So I, I made the point that, you know, I just don't think it's going to happen for Connor Hazard at Celtic. And Celtic would be best to listen to offers for him if anybody wanted them. And my verdict was that he was expendable. Do you, do you concur with that? Do you think Celtic should be listening to offers for Conor Hazard if there's interest out there? Uh, aye, but the thing, the kind of thing hanging over that is he did, he did do well at HJK Helsinki, right? I agree with that. And he, he did play in the Europa League against the likes of Roma. Um, I think that stint will probably have done his confidence really good. Like a, a really good boost to his confidence after kind of dropping out the squads and stuff. But it's still unlikely, I agree with you, that he'll see any game time at Celtic. His contract's up at the end of the season, though. So there might well be clubs looking at him on a pre-contract already. Yeah. The only way you get a fee for that is if Celtic negotiate and say, like, if you want them now, it's going to be yeah, you can take a nominal yeah. fee, that kind of thing. Um, so I, I agree with you that he is expendable, but in terms of getting much in return for him, I don't know uh, the scope for that, really. I think he maybe be going on a pre-contract and it maybe be a nominal fee to, to let yeah. him go out the door in January. But no, nah, I don't see him breaking in. I think the stars are aligned for him to get a shot and go during that season. Um, I don't think they'll align again for him, really. Yeah, correct. I, I totally concur with that, Aidan. And I guess he might well just let the contract run out and go and feed him a contract somewhere to somebody who maybe has kept tabs on him and maybe think he can do them a turn. Yeah, I think the fact that he's deals up in the summer and that he can do the pre-contract, it's probably unlikely somebody's going to come in and pay you know, a fee for him at this stage, unless somebody's really desperate to sign him sort of thing. But in terms of Hazard, you know, for somebody who a few years ago wasn't really involved, came in, made those crucial saves in the, the penalty shootout in the final Scottish Cup winners medal. He's then went on loan, won a league title in Finland and also played in the Europa League against Roma, like Sean said, you know, his confidence will probably be in the best place right now it's ever been. And in terms of somebody who wasn't really involved, he's managed to carve out a, an all right career for him at this point, to be honest. And I'm sure he'll go and do a job at a, a decent standard. The fact he was all doing all right in the Europa League would say that he's definitely got ability there. No doubt about that. Yeah, but we're all agreed that he's probably, if he's going to get a regular diet, Sorry, first, yeah, yeah, yeah. it'll yeah. be elsewhere, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Aye, Tony, Robert Gibson saying that if it was a straight choice, he would keep Hazard and, and, uh, and let go of Scott Bain. I just. Don't get me wrong, I don't actually disagree with that sentiment because I think Hazard, I mean, he's younger. Uh, aye, but the contract situation plus the fact that Bain is clearly happy to just sit and wait and maybe yeah. not play at all, uh, but be about the club and, and fill in if, he, if he's ever needed. It's a different stage of his career for Hazard. I think especially having played a full season at a, a, a top club in Finland, the, the top club in Finland, uh, HGK Helsinki, played European football and stuff. He's probably just wanting to play football again. Yeah. Okay, now the next one on my list was Stephen Welsh. Now, I said right. that I, my verdict was it was expendable, but only as a loan deal. I said it'd be wise to mm-hmm. hold on to Stephen Welsh, but let him go out on loan and see if he can get some valuable game time elsewhere, because I still think Welsh could have something to offer Celtic in the future, and I'm not sure that I would want to part with him at this particular juncture because Celtic have been affected by injuries in the past to key players and they sometimes they all came along at once, didn't they? Like buses. You saw with the striking department that that happened early doors. So I think I would let Stephen Wells certainly go on loan, Sean, get some game time 
in a kind of way that uh, Liam Scales has been doing as well at Aberdeen. And, and if anything, I would maybe lend them to a, a Premiership, a Scottish Premiership club. Right. So he gets used to playing everywhere. Obviously, he, won't, he wouldn't play against Celtic, but if there was an interest there, I, I would I would pursue that. It's a weird one for me because his deal doesn't expire until 2025, right? Yes. And, um, he's well out of the reckoning so far this season, but part of that was due, due to injury and illness at a time when he, he might well have got some game time. Um, yeah. The length of his deal, the homegrown thing, the home go, homegrown quarter yep. means he, he might, I agree with you, he might be sent out on loan rather than, rather than permanently, but I think it maybe depends on any bids that come in. The interest that he has supposedly generated is from various places. Um, so it might be if something decent comes in, they are open to a permanent move. But I, th- I think I probably side with you in terms of it might be a loan, a loan deal first. Aidan, he scored the first goal of Celtic's Premiership season, the 2 0 1 against Aberdeen back in August, if you can remember that far back. And, uh, you know, and a lot of people were saying, yep, this was his season. You know, Ralph Thompson there say he's never going to be good enough, sadly. Do you can cover that that he's never going to be good enough, or have you seen enough in Welsh teams think that there's something there and it's worth persevering? Uh, I think there's something there, particularly in terms of his ability to sort of carry the ball and pass it <clears throat> from, from the back. And Andrew, obviously, seems a fan of him as well. But I agree with you, Tony, uh, in terms of your opinion from your article. I think probably the best case scenario at the moment would be that he maybe goes out on loan to get minutes, uh, or like maybe in the summer, if you have to potentially bring in another centre-back sort of thing, he goes out on loan. I wouldn't be wanting to let him go right now, for a couple of reasons, obviously the homegrown thing, but I think there is maybe something there with Stephen Welsh, but I don't know if I can see him getting a lot of minutes Mm -hmm. sort of in the near future, so a loan would probably be the best shout right now, in my opinion. Yeah, Derek Crawford coming in again saying he wouldn't sell Welsh, especially with Gents going, the loan deal possibly, and Michael Ross saying without regular game time, no player can improve. I'm, I'm a lover of that as well. You, you have to play. Don't, although, I don't know if you learn too much sitting on the bench. You know, But Ange does mention him a lot as well. He seems to mm-hmm. like him. You know, Ange likes to mention the, the Bull and Welshie and all that kind of stuff whenever he's talking about players who maybe coming back to fitness or on the periphery and the fringes. So, might well be that Ange has plans for him or a plan for him and they've maybe spoken about that, maybe hear more about that in the coming days. Charlie McGarvey, Welsh is age is similar to Hazard, so surely the same logic applies uh, regarding career development. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen... I get where he's coming Welsh. from, me, but it's different, different, different positions as well. Like If you're a keeper, you're either playing or you're not a centre-back, there's always a chance you get minutes and stuff, but I do take the sentiment and I think I think ultimately that's where the loan thing comes in, like, that that's an yeah. acknowledgement that he does need the minutes, but maybe not quite ready for an acknowledgement that he's not up to scratch at Celtic. I think that's the, the medium between it. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, I also, still think, sorry, on you go. No, I still think that uh, Welsh has something to offer mm-hmm. at Celtic, you know, and as you say, he takes the homegrown box as well, mm-hmm. you know, and, he, and he's had chances and he's, he, he, he's did, I think he's did particularly well. Mm-hmm. He didn't say there he's got an eye for a pass and you know he scored a couple of goals. Just he just needs to iron out the, the rough edges, doesn't he? And he's I, I mean <clears throat> we I, I can agree with Max Stark here. He says he wouldn't loan Welsh to a, a Scottish Premiership club that just lumps the ball up the park and needs to go and loan somewhere that, that plays out from the back similar to us. And that's uh, Stuart Ross, I think it was middle of December. Uh, whenever it no, it was the end of December, it was when Yuki Kobayashi's uh, deal was, was getting done and he kinda hypothesised that if it meant Welsh would go out on loan, if proffered kind of three clubs, where would that suit? Because you kind of can't really, same as what Max is saying, you can't really send him out to a club that's going to just have him standing at the back and lumping it. Uh, now, not all clubs in Scotland are like that, right? Not all clubs in Scotland are like that, so there might be a place for him at a couple of clubs in Scotland if, if it came up, but generally speaking, Stuart's point was there's, there's a few clubs, including a couple that have been linked with them, or linked with Celtic players, sorry, I should say, like, like Sam Monza, eh, Vitoria, where Michael Johnston's playing just now on loan, or two of them, I th- can't remember, I think the other one might have been a, a Belgian club, but I can't remember which one, eh, that kind of fit the style, where he could play a similar type of style th- out from the back, but still be getting regular game time, rather than sitting on the bench and watching it, with Stuart's kind of idea. So I can I, I, I take Max Stark's point with that as well, eh, if it is to be a loan move. Yeah, 
that's a fair point. Well made, Aaron. Were you would you be an advocate of that sending them to a team that plays similar to Celtic and not necessarily a Scottish club then? No, absolutely. I mean, ideally you'd be able to do that for every single player that goes out and loan, but I know it's not always possible and in terms of some players, maybe such as a Yeti, etc. It was just a case of getting a club that was going to take him on loan rather than the ideal style because he probably doesn't fit into the manager's plans. But somebody like Welsh, somebody like obviously Mikey Johnson, I think it is good that if they can go somewhere that maybe not the exact same style, but even if it's with Welsh, a team that passed it out from the back because that's another season or half a season of him being able to develop that skill rather than like the comment I was saying, just one up the park and then he comes back and he's had six months out of the way that Andrew wants to play. So, yeah, ideally, he goes to somewhere that plays a similar style if, if that's possible. Now, the next one on the list will, no doubt, polarise opinion. But Sorry, two, two seconds, Tony. Yeah. Just, there's a few comments here asking about the homegrown thing. Uh, Raymond Haddon, there was, a, there was about two or three mm-hmm. other ones just saying how many homegrown players you need. I've actually been asked, somebody, somebody that, that a regular kind of viewer messaged me on Twitter and asked if I would do an article on it or do a special on this about it. And I think we will just because there's a lot of people not quite sure about it. But as far as I'm aware, it's still that you need eight homegrown players in your 25 man squad um, for a UEFA competition. And it can be, it doesn't need to be just Scottish, by the way. It depends when they arrived at the club and different things. So it can be trained by Celtic or by another club in the same association. So, for instance, James McCarthy qualifies as a national homegrown player because he came through at Hamilton. And that's got to have been between three years when they were 15 to 21. So you've got players like Boston Lowell. Uh, Lowell, sorry, who, although he never came through the academy, he still moved up here young enough that at some point yeah. he will hit that homegrown quota. I don't actually know if he hits it this year, probably next year actually, he might not. So I need to look into that, that's probably why I should do an article on it. Um, Welsh obviously hits it already. McGregor, Forrest, do you know what I mean? Like, um, yeah. Those players are, are automatically part of that quota. McCarthy hits it, as I say, because of the Hamilton connection. Um, but aye, that, that's, a kind of, that's the rule. So there is that consideration when it comes to letting people go as well. It's why Scott Robertson was in squads for the Champions League, but was never going to get sure. on. Yeah, okay, okay. That's, uh, that's to enlighten the people that were asking the question. I hope that's uh, helped you guys. Now, you mentioned the name there, and that's the name that we're going to come to in the next on the list, and it's James McCarthy. Now, the reason we did this six expendable show was this was players that were at currently at the club. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It wasn't it just now that we could get rid uh, of them. Yeah, Italy, Tony, you, you would, yeah. The newsletter's got a word limit, so you'd have been well over it if it was yeah. uh, if it was everybody else out on loan. Barcast, Sorrow. We are aware of, yeah, Barcast, Sorrow and Mikey Johnson, guys like we are well aware of that. <laughs> we're talking about them, but we, we based it on players that were currently at the club that could leave in this window. And uh, James McCarthy's name obviously came up, Sean. Don't know how you feel about James McCarthy. A lot of people had their eyebrows raised about the signing uh, when it first came around and came about. And yeah, it's just not happened for James McCarthy, has it? At his boyhood club? No, as I said, there is another homegrown, uh, albeit nation, not club player. His deal expires in 2025 again, which at the time I think everybody thought well, that, that contract's a bit, a bit long uh, for a player in his situation and of his age. Uh, there will be, for that reason, there'll be fewer suitors for him than there would be for the likes of Welsh, you imagine. Uh, sure. He's played 931 minutes in total since arriving. Barely any starts, although he did make plenty of match day squads last year. Uh, just now he's coming back from an injury, but fundamentally, I not one I expect to feature much, but the contract, the homegrown thing, and his age also just, it, it makes it unlikely that somebody will actively bid for him, you'd think. And for that reason, there was a comment put in here um, Michael Ross straight to the point he thinks they should terminate his contract because fundamentally nobody's going to buy him yeah I, I would agree with that Aidan 27 appearances he's made and 931 minutes as Sean um, mm-hmm. said there that because I'd written that as stats in the, the piece just to highlight as Sean said the length of the contract but what what's actually what you've actually got in return Michael Duffin saying exactly Tony it's just not happened Sometimes it just doesn't happen with players, does it? Nope. Aiden's not having it. Aiden wants Aiden, McCarthy Aiden in, his, strong. in his team, obviously. Yeah. Right? And in true Casablanca style, Aiden doesn't want to play it again, Sean. You know what I mean? so, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> there you have it. 
Oh, well, um, yeah. I will. I mean, there's, 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 music till Aiden comes back. Or what? <laughs> there's um, there's there's comments in in the chat here. Just not really anybody saying McCarthy should be staying. Put it yeah. that way. I think that that's a reflection of um, of I mean, it's not necessarily the way people think of him. Just the way that people think of his deal. I, I uh, and, and, and also that just as Will McMillan says, the midfielders that are there, it's just there's so much in front of him. The only reason, or the only two reasons to keep him would be the length of contract, meaning nobody's going to bid for him or nobody's going to pay money for him. And then two, uh, the homegrown thing. Yeah, and I said it in the Maurice synopsis, Sean. I said the Republic, the former Republic of Ireland international has never shaken off the fringe player tag for the hoops and he may well benefit from seeking a new challenge because he ain't breaking into that Celtic midfield anytime no. soon. And mm -hmm. I think that's how every Celtic supporter feels about that particular situation with James McCarthy, isn't it? Aye, I think so. Um, I don't. Aye, I don't really know what else to say apart from he's so far doing that pecking order as Antonio says here. He just he's not going to get minutes. Yeah. And last season he got some minutes. He was in a lot of squads, but then he got a lot of minutes in total. And I think that told you that the situation the squad was in at that point, you needed the body rather than the player. If you know what yeah, I mean, yeah, to be in, involved in the squads, but he wasn't getting picked. Because he made a lot of squads last year, a lot yeah, of squads yeah. last season. Um, this season, he's obviously been injured, but realistically, with the midfield options that are there, and we'll come to this with the next guy as well, I just don't see how he's getting in that squad. Yeah, and another one with the, who the manager always seemed to name-check as well, to the point where when he did name-check him, you actually forgot he was there, didn't you? And you were yeah. like, oh, McCarthy. I mean, I'm sure he's good about the, by all means, he's good about the, the squad and different things, but yeah. I... Yeah, Aiden's in his left. Oh, yes. sorry. Sorry, about that. He's back. Shaft is back because he's back in the left shaft. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, sir? Yeah, fine. Apologies for that. Uh, you you left just man. as we were on the cusp of getting your ver your big, stunning verdict on, on James McCarthy. So, take it away, sir. Uh, yeah, just... <laughs> I'm going to guess you are probably saying that it's time that he's moved out the door. Just yeah. based off the fact he's hardly played and he's picked up a few injuries when he's been here, but it's obviously going to be difficult given his contract situation. Twenty twenty five is a long time in his age at that stage. It's going to be quite hard to probably get moving on in January, but in the summer, I think that's possible. I don't know if maybe even Celtic can cut a deal and he just sort of gets at least in his contract somewhere the way that Lovain and Cham did when Ange first came in. Rather than like you know a direct transfer fee to a club because a longer term that would maybe benefit rather than paying wages. But yeah, I think that's possible. Hopefully, Celtic will try and move them on. Excellent. Now we had one more person on the list, Sean, didn't we? Yep. And that was Idaguchi. Yep. Who we touched upon briefly the other day, but another one it's not happened for, but. He's been a kind of victim of some real bad luck, hasn't he? To be fair to him, I uh, you you says he must he must think he's been cursed, and I, I can kind of see I can see that. Uh, I think he's he's still to me the exception that proves the rule of yeah. Ashford to Coglu's transfer success so far. Um, injuries, the form of others, all count towards it. And, and you're right in, in your piece when you says he might feel cursed because the timing of both these injuries, apart yeah. from anything else, have been just so unlucky. The Alwa game, first proper go. Gets a bad injury, absolutely clattered, taken out, and he, he's not really seen again. Comes back in pre season, gets a couple of couple of games in pre season, gets injured again just before the season actually starts, not seen again. Um, to me, it, it comes back to the same kind of thing as McCarthy and Abogard and, and different things. What would have to happen for him to get a look in between now and the end of the season? Yeah. And I think it would be five or six injuries that would need to happen. Um, and I think that tells its own story. So if there's interest from elsewhere, I think you embrace it. And you, you move yeah. along. And there's talk, Aidan, of him going back home, uh, some interest back home in the, the J League forum. Uh, for there be controversy, he stick with the Gucci for another year, give him another chance. And, and and it's possible that the manager might also do that, Michael Duffin saying give him time. But I just look and I just think that the Gucci is not something that I think is going to break into that Celtic midfield anytime soon either, like McCarthy. So I think it'd be best if. Both parties came to some kind of mutually beneficial arrangement and, and allowed them to go home and 
try and resurrect his career again? Yeah, I think particularly with the arrival of Awata, who looks like he's going to be the option in the number six position, it's going to be quite hard for the Gucci to get game time, even though his chances were already limited before his arrival. So I think overall it's probably likely that he will be moving on. Maybe not in the January transfer window, but in the summer, if Celtic can find a potential suitor. Probably in the J League, that's probably the most likely, just based off the fact that after playing in Europe the last time, that's where he went to. So, yeah, it, it's it's. I, I can understand why people want to maybe give him another chance because he's not featured a lot and he was unlucky with his injury, but I think he'll probably be moving on to one personally. Yeah. We managed to decipher that, didn't we, Sean? We got there. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Huh? So, some echoes here, but hey, there you go. We're all there, we're all good. Uh, well, that was the, the six players there, Sean. We, we, we went through them all. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, obviously, we know the likes of Barkas, Ejeti and Sorrow, but as you mm -hmm. said, the, the article would have been longer than the Dead Sea Scrolls, so we, we kind of put a, a limit on that, don't we, in terms of what we're writing. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's more, it's like the premise is a January transfer window. Now, yeah. one of them could be the subject of a bid from the clubs that there are or other clubs. It's not, it's not unheard of. But on the premise that it's the January transfer window, you're really looking at the people that are here that yes. could be the subject of bids or could leave or could get their contract terminated or go on loan or whatever it is. So I, I think the, the Soro Ayeti Barkas contingent, I think that's mm. that's a separate article for you, yeah. really. <laughs> Mikey Johnson probably coming out of that category as well. Now, I'll ask you this, yeah. guys, because I've seen a couple of people throwing it up in the chat. Business done for Celtic? Do you think they'll pull in someone terms of, in terms of incomings? Incomings? Or do I you think still it, that there's somebody else will come in, Sean? I think I think it's done. I, I, I think it's done. I don't besides a keeper, which I don't see being a priority in this window, I think that's a longer term thing. Maybe see how Toby Oliami does it at Cork and, and different things. Where else are you expecting to, to strengthen? Maybe another striker, I can see the two years maybe saying, but I don't know if that will happen. Uh, beyond that, I think they're well stocked everywhere. Uh, the only thing I could see maybe happening is if someone else touched with it, it doesn't happen. But if, if one of the real key players is a subject of a bid that you can't turn yeah. down in the next five, six days, apart from that, no, I think it might be done in terms of incomings. Outgoings, different matter, as we've just spoke about. But I, I, I think I think maybe done. Aiden, you, you go along with that, done? Yeah, I would agree. You probably can't understand me for the audio, but yeah, I would agree. <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. I yeah, I I think my my heart is saying yep. Yeah. Oh sorry, my head is saying business done, can't see anybody else coming in. But my heart is saying I just I don't know something some wee niggle there saying that they'll maybe do something. Uh because I think we we tried where well, we got to about thirty nine minutes and didn't get what daily George's Jackamakis mentioned, but that seems to be mm -hmm. the ease airing towards signing for Atalanta, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, Atlanta United, that is. Atlanta, uh, sorry, yeah, Atlanta, Atlanta United in uh, the MLS. Well, well, if it was Atalanta, that'd be some move from him. They're, they're yeah, going great yeah. still. But, Atlanta, well, Atlanta United in the, the, MLS, yeah. the MLS. So, seems to prefer that move. But every time you read something, Sean, it just says it's edging closer, edging closer. It's, you know, I know there's still, what, there's still five days left in the window for that to get concluded mm -hmm. I can see that kind of going right to the wire in that sense but yeah I don't know I you said that you mentioned a striker maybe something in me that's thinking if someone does come in it, it would be another striker to have mm -hmm. as I said three strikers at the club because I, I in an ideal world I would want three strikers at the club but we brought in O oh, we have Kyogo and Jackie Mack is well he won't he Leave mm. yes, I guess seems to kind of rumble on and continue, but no, well, there's Scott McGill. He's I was going to he's, say he's channeling, he's channeling your <laughs> newsletters for the last month. He's he's still, still in the Yakimakis. It's down. funny, I, I I read some online stuff last night saying that uh, various people saying that they'd heard Yakimakis wants to stay. You know, it was an old taxi yeah. driver rumor, wasn't it? That I you know, don't know why, you know, so I, I and I'm not. I'm not basing that on anything, but there's just sort of the narratives that are playing out 
One minute he's signing for Atlanta, it's edging closer. Then he said, a change of heart, he wants to stay, all that kind of stuff. So until we've got five days and until something is announced, uh, you know, a positive proof that he's leaving or he's staying, then we're just waiting that to happen. But uh, there's something then we says that if he goes, I wouldn't rule out another striker. Let's put it that way. That's, I guess, was the long-winded way of what I was trying to say there. Hi. Um, I've got a, a few, just before we wrap up, I might go Ross saying how many players the Celtic have on loan. It must be a long list. In terms of first team players, there's nine. So there's almost a full a full team uh, out on loan. Uh, try to think. Barkas, uh, Barkas Scales, uh, Liam Shaw, I take it we count, we count Liam Shaw, yeah. uh, Sazio Uragidi, Ismail Asoro, Albin Ayeti, Johnny Kenny, remember he's away on loan to Shamrock Rovers, he changed his loan, Adam Montgomery, and then Mikey Johnston, I think that's nine. Um, yeah. And then you've got some of the younger players, Ben Wiley's away on loan, I think, as well, and different things. I don't really necessarily count count them yet. Um, but just on that note, uh, where is it? Ian comes in saying, uh, could you guys, where is it? Could you guys do a clip on how loan players are going? We actually, we do a newsletter now and again, just updating on how the loan players are getting on. We've not done one in a wee while because the likes of Ayeti haven't even started back yet from the winter break, but there will be one in the in the often over the next maybe couple of weeks. Uh, it'll be one of the evening newsletters. Um, but I don't see a reason we can't do a, a briefing on it. Sure. That's, right. I mean, that's you, you're the boss, man. You can decide <laughs> that, isn't it? That right, Aidan? We leave that in the capable hands of those who make those decisions. I'll be try. <laughs> Angelo Tyro coming in saying my taxi driver's cousin's neighbour is in the know. So that must be the same taxi driver's cousin neighbour that I know as well, Angelo. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I see I, I try not to read too much into I was just merely highlighting that whenever you go on social media. You just it goes from one extreme to another, doesn't it? That's kind of uh-huh. uh, you hear or you read various things, but yeah, it will all play out in the next five days with regards to George's Jack and Marcus. But yeah, but, hey, go gentlemen, 42 minutes just like that, eh? Talking about players going out mostly and possible incomings. But Sean thinks the business is done, Adrian thinks the business is done. I'm willing to believe the business is done, but there's a bit of me just not quite there yet. <laughs> uh, but there you have it. We'll find out. We've got five days. The, the countdown's on. Transfer window. O's in the building. He wants to star in the Celtic movie. Now, Sean, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Yep. Bye. Movie set. Yeah. As you say, he ain't seen nothing yet. He ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, indeed. Here's hoping he turns out to be a movie star, Sean and Aidan for Celtic, or at least a, another wonderful Celtic team player. And the way the manager hugged him and the way he spoke about him in glowing terms, I think the manager knows for a fact he's going to bring something to the table, doesn't he? Aye, aye. It was a, it was a positive positive kind of comments and stuff on it. It was... Uh, yeah. He actually, despite the fact that I was saying, in, in Jason, when we done the video a special, was saying about the... The fact that he's not played since the end of October and he's, he's just started pre-season, um, or he had just started pre-season with Suwon. Uh, Ange Postacoglu said he obviously bought him for the potential, but he thinks he can contribute right away. So, I don't know. Tanadice, Tanadice, I don't know. Yes, yes. He didn't really look forward to the predicted 11s on that one. Indeed, he likes a curveball, doesn't he? He does, mm-hmm. uh, Ange Postacoglu. And speaking of that, just been reminded in the comments that it's Australia Day today. Nice. So nice. If you're that way inclined and you celebrate Australia Day, we'll say happy Australia Day to those who Aye, happy Australia Day, yeah. Uh, indeed, an homage to the manager. Uh, indeed, that's uh, so and of course uh, Aaron Aaron Moy as well. Aaron Aaron Moy, Aaron Aaron Moy to give him his full name and his name check, Aiden. You no know, one day they'll sing that about you. Aiden, Aiden McDonald. Aiden, Aiden McDonald. I'm, I'm, I'm convinced. Aiden, I'm convinced at that. Need to shot them to Mac, surely. Aye, oh, Aiden, Aiden Mac. Aiden, aye. Aiden Mac. Aye, suppose that, that scans better, doesn't it? He's you know? shrugging as if I've already had that song before. Tony. I'd probably get it when he goes in the house from his dad and things like that. <laughs> you know, throw those petals and all that, and I kind of 
Kung Chung. Well, very much taking advantage of the fact he can barely unmute himself because it's going to be shocking he's, audio. He's, he's shining like Darth Vader and kind of stuff like that, yeah. You didn't, don't say anything if just to call you Shaft from now on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Aiden, thank you for your contribution today. And we know you're at the mercy of technology whenever you get in the building. We do appreciate it, all right? And you can get your own back tomorrow when the old guys are back with you, all right? Start on Waldorf and the Muppets here, you know, so... There you go. Hey, there you go. Michael Duffin, he's on. <laughs> he's in straight away. There you have it. But thanks for that, Aiden. Appreciate it. Sean, thanks very much. No um, Guys. Before you, before you plug the print, I've got a question about the print as well. Mm -hmm. uh, David Ferguson, how long is the shipping? Uh, the terms and conditions at the bottom of the, the articles and different things and, and all that, it's mid-February, so in a couple of weeks and then they'll all get shipped out at that point. So. Yeah, right. nice one. Well, there you have it. Strap line running along the bottom. You know what I'm going to say. Hit the button, subscribe www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe, and you can enjoy four months of unlimited access for a pound. As well as new subscribers will receive that limited edition bespoke A3 artwork by renowned Celtic football artist made by Frankie, as you can see on the screen there. It's worth having. And all for the click of a button www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. And we also thank Seneca for their sponsorship. Celtic Way Warning Briefing is now sponsored by Seneca Medical Group. And Seneca are the number one hair transplant company in Europe. And they offer innovative hair restoration treatments. And you can find out more about Seneca via the links in the description of the video. We say thank you to Heather for doing up her husband good and proper <laughs> with some Seneca jives this morning. Love that. Excellent. But guys, have a terrific Thursday. We'll see you all again for a fabulous Friday, hopefully. Take care. Thanks for the comments. We know we do it, say it every day, but we couldn't do it without you. It helps the show tickle, and we hope you enjoy it. We certainly do. Cheers, Tony. Cheers, Aidan. Cheers, guys. <laughs>